Hello everyone, in the previous tutorial I was looking into the Lightwave 2018 uh, render buffers and getting them into After Effects and uh, for the most part this worked really well just being able to add them on top of each other with a blend mode of add. Um, I also looked into the object and surface IDs and how they are handled in uh, Lightwave and how they're brought back out into After Effects and for the most part this kind of worked um, reasonably well but I had a little bit of an issue with, um, I guess, isolating uh, certain objects. Um, and I tried as well in, in Fusion, and the results are, are okay, but they're not hugely well, or they're, they're not particularly well anti-aliased. Um, so I just thought I'd walk through the technique I'm using now, um, and that is using custom buffers. So let's have a quick look. Um, so we have our scene. And I'm just going to do a quick VPR so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to switch off and G, uh, interpolated GI. And I'm going to go through some of the passes here. And I have two new passes set up. One is object ID and one is surface ID. Um, and these come in really handy. Uh, in After Effects as you can just use one channel as your mat, which is fantastic. Um, so let's look at quickly how to set this up. Uh, I'm just going to do Control P, which is for render properties. And we're already on the buffers tab here. And we're just going to create two custom buffers. So let's create custom buffer and call it surface ID RGB and another buffer and call it object ID RGB. And, and now uh, we'll check those as well for export. And F5, bring up our surfaces. And I have um, within each object, there's two or three surfaces. So let's deal with the lamp first. So lamp bulb, lamp color, lamp, uh, lamp metal. Um, those are what make up this lamp surface. So let's open up our node editor and we can see we have two new surfaces here. And it's kind of simple really. Um, it's just plugging in colors into these surfaces. So let's say Let's say our first one is going to be red. So this is going to be a red object. So let's go, let's copy that. Paste, object, paste, object. Let's see, I've been doing this before. And now get a VPR object I have to switch off something here yep and there is our object and now we're going to do the same for surface but this time oof let me just do this after without vpr on because it's tanking things okay cool um, and this time we'll just do RGB. So red's already good. Donk. Green. Just copy this while I'm at it. And blue. And there we go. We have our surface ID and our object ID. Okay, so I'm just going to set the rest of those up and hit render and load up After Effects. Um, one thing we're going to take advantage of as well, which isn't technically like a surface ID, um, but it could be quite handy is here is to use um, I have 
the image map here, which has some of the writing on for the final render. So it just has writing on the coffee cup things here. Um, let's see if I can speed that up. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've kind of extracted that, extracted the, because it's sort of blue on the texture, so I've extracted it here with the multiply, changed that to a scalar, um, and so we can use that as um, to separate our surface ID. So I'll just plug that in. I've just changed the top to blue, oh, uh, it's green. Sorry if this is getting confusing now. Oops. So there we have like a blue channel um, for changing the color of our text or adjusting our text if we wish. Um, okay, um, let's hit a render. So I want my final, I'll take all of the extra buffers and these as well. And I think I'll export everything to EXRs here and PNGs and just keep them 8-bit here. Okay. Okay, render is done. Now let's fire up After Effects. And import our renders. There we go. Now I've got uh, EXRs for all of the buffers, so I'm just going to select all of those and drop them in the comp. And change their mode to add. And we have the final render for comparison here. Obviously we haven't got the background in. And it looks a bit different. Um, and that is because, um, just by trial and error, because I have a multiplier on the global illumination, I have to match that, it seems, over here in diffuse indirect. So I'm just going to use an exposure effect. And that brings us back to um, the right kind of look. Okay, now to use our RGB surface and object IDs. Let's drag them in. Put them here. Just going to hide them for the sec for a second. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer with Control Alt Y, and I'm just going to change the color of, let's say, the speaker. So let's call this color speaker. And now let's work on our mats. So. Let's start with our surface ID. Let's bring up set mat command. And we're going to go the red. Oh, sorry. From uh, take mat, we're going to use the object ID. So red is the lamp, green is that, and the last one, blue, is our speaker. And then we're going to use another set mat. And we're just going to choose red from its own channel. And then we have a nice mat for, so if we solo this, we look at the alpha, it's nice and clean. Okay. So now we can use this as an alpha mat and go to town with, you know, any kind of adjustments we want to do. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, very nice color. Um, 
so that's about it, really. Um, uh, just as as an addition, I'll, I tend to do um, noise reduction in here as well. So like, so the diffuse indirect is kind of pretty noisy. So I tend to use uh, neat video. Mm -hmm. um, let's do it. With, let's choose this area. Um, to do the noise reduction cleanup. And as well, you know, you're having the ID passes could be quite handy because what, let me just in solo. Um, because what would work for the cups may not necessarily work here for the lamp. So you could again, um, adjust that with another ID, uh, pass. Okay. I hope this was useful for somebody and thanks very much for watching.